we'll end up getting stuck on a particular chorus or a theme, right? Now, I know some of us are all word. Give me the word. <laughs> Let's get over there with the frilly stuff. Let's get in the real. You know what I'm saying? David was one of those guys who liked the frilly stuff. <laughs> and, and the thing about it, here, here's a, Tanner hadn't been here, so let's pick on him. Come on up. Can I get you to come up too, Allie? I know you love to be in front of people. Okay. So. Shut this off for a second. Back on. God created worship leaders, especially worshipers, and they're and they're kind of sensitive to the spirit. And so sometimes, like you know, you have some people and you go like this, Ow. and then you have other people and you're going, <laughs> and they don't feel a thing. And, and worship leaders, are, they they feel what's on the heart of God, and sometimes the rest of us don't feel spit. You know what I mean? It was like, and, and I I want you to do. Give these guys a hand. <laughs> David had this word that you'd see throughout Psalms that said Selah. And it's like, here's this thing that God's saying or talking about. Think about it. And for some of you who maybe, you know, that going over and over, you kind of like, you know, that one of those modes. It, well, when you do that, just close your eyes and think about what's going on. You know, like this morning, he was talking about the Father's love. And just let your mind go there. If you're not lost in the music and that's a little bit of a hard feat, just let your mind go to what kind of dad he is. And just, just get lost there. O okay? Because we all are different. Amen? Okay. Seemed like there was another story I was going to tell, but... It's a miracle when the IRS calls you and wants you, not calls you, but sends you a thing and says, we want to give you more money. Amen? <laughs> I like that. Um, I just want to make a special emphasis. Two weeks from today, Putty Putnam from uh, the Vineyard in Urbana, who's over there at School of Ministry, will be here on a Sunday morning. Please, please do not miss it, if at all possible. Do not. And encourage people to come and you guys in high school younger guys this is a guy you don't want to meet this this fellow is brilliant he has a PhD in quantum physics from the University of Illinois which he's you know not the dullest knife in the drawer he's brilliant but he's fun and uh, just just a great teacher uh, I've been going to a class of his on Sunday nights and I'm just we're just blessed to have him so please be here and invite people it'll be wonderful yeah, and so Joey's going to invite five of his friends. Amen. I mean, they'll, they really will love it. You, you will. It, it'd be awesome. So I guess that was it. All right, you ready? Okay, where do we want to go? Go to Proverbs 22 and put your, just, we're not going to, we're not going to read it yet, but, but those of you who need a scripture in front of you, go to 22. You know, many theologians say that Proverbs was, uh, you know, that, that Solomon was homeschooled and, and Proverbs was his, was his uh, study. And um, there's some really cool stuff you can pull out of Proverbs 30, 31 about his mom in it. It's really neat. And we won't go there. Don't have time to. But I heard a story. I want to tell you this one. I heard a story. A couple who uh, the husband has a, a very, really large ministry. And uh, the media department from the, from the, the church that they're connected to were going to come over and shoot pictures you know new pictures because they said you know what's on your blogs and your website is like 15 years old and you know when people see that picture and then you show up in their church it's like oh my gosh <laughs> he must have seen God and you know had one of those like on the Ten Commandments you know where Moses comes down he looks gray anyway 
So they've been on the road, and they're, and they're laying in bed, and, and his, his wife turns to him and said, you know, they're coming over to take her pictures today. And he said, oh, man, you know how I hate to have my pictures taken. She said, I know, don't have anything to wear. And they're, and they're just ragging, you know, back and forth. And they're usually not like that, but they just, how many of you like to have your picture taken? Nobody wants to say that, but some of you do. <laughs> It depends if it makes you look good or not, right? You know, if I look good, oh, yeah. So, so they come over, and they're like, oh, you know, he's, he's looking in the mirror, and, you know, we're, we're fat, and we, you know, all this stuff, and, and uh, try to make something look, make you look a little bit smaller, and that seems impossible to find. And he, he puts something on, and she puts something on, and, you know, how women, we, you know, nothing to wear, and go through everything. Finally, put something on. They come in, and. And uh, these guys knocked at the door, and she said, this is your deal. You go get the door. <laughs> and, he, and he opens the door and, and says, uh, he said, hey, how you doing? And he's like, great. And I'm thinking, I don't think so. You know, inside. But, of course, he said, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a pastor. I'm a minister. I can't say that kind of stuff. So I said, great. You know, <laughs> they come in. I said, we got chocolate-covered strawberries. And he's like, whoa. They got chocolate-covered strawberries, he says to his wife. And they both look at each other. Now, I better not do it now. It'll make us fatter. So we'll, maybe after they leave, we'll, we'll kind of get into that. And, and so these people are like, oh, my gosh, does that shirt look good on you? It, it matches your eyes. It's just, he said, I've got brown eyes. Everything goes with brown. I mean, you know, come on. They, you're, you're paid to, to say those things. But, but they just keep going on. And, oh, Talks about his wife. I just, you are gorgeous. I, you guys ought to be models, you know. And they're just going on, and, and they're they're saying, here, sit there, and they're, ch -ch -ch -ch, and there's three cameras going, and it's like a photo shoot, and and they, they just keep going on. They say, is there any place we could, you know, any other places we could go to, you know, do some shots? And, and could you just turn like that? Oh my gosh, you look so great when you do that. And and could you could you just move your hand? And ch -ch -ch, and he's like, they're wanting him to kind of be a little more romantic. And he said, I'm not feeling it, but you know. Go ahead and do it. And, and they just keep going. And they, they said, you know, he, he goes upstairs to change, and she goes upstairs to change and comes down. And, and they like, oh, wow. Man, that other was great, but you are amazing. You are just so gorgeous. Look at that. And they on and on. And they finally, after they take taken, they're saying, look here, look, look. You know how they have that on, on a, a computer, look at your pictures. And, and they're saying, you know, can you believe how, isn't that an amazing picture? And he's like, well, I don't know I get that. But, you know, he, they just keep going and going. And after a while, he said, you know, could you take some pictures in my office, you know? Could we take some? And they come out and he said, not bad, man, not bad. You know, so, and, it, and it keeps going on. And so after a couple hours, they leave. And so they got in front of the mirror and thought, well, I do look pretty good, you know. I just, you know, and it, and she's, oh man, she's. And, and and he said, I had this thought. There's something about being in the presence of people who think they're beautiful. We're talking about making disciples. We talked last week about feeling apart. You know, we talked about being connected. Because so much of the time, our idea of discipleship is just giving information out, and there's no heart connection. And one of the things that the Lord wants us to do is, is develop personally, and I think corporately, an atmosphere where we look at one another through the eyes of the Lord. Now, we talk about that, but there's something about when we hear the way God looks at us, there's, there's over a period of time this reformation on the inside, and I began to look at myself the way God looks. Amen? And, and sometimes in the church we've had this idea about, you know, you've got to stay humble. <laughs> if somebody compliments you, you like, you've got to say, yeah, thanks, that was pretty good. But Jesus gave me the gift, you know, that it was all Jesus. And we have that tendency to, as though... It's almost, it's almost wrong to accept a compliment and to feel good about you. But isn't it amazing when you, 
when you feel good about you, how much, how much more you do, how much more creative you are, how much more outgoing you are, how much more you actually accomplish. Isn't that true? Yesterday I was, I had a day with my wife. It was just so nice. We went to Terre Haute and um, ate breakfast at Cracker Barrel. And I said, we need to go buy you some clothes. And, and she's, she, she's, uh, she's not like some women. She doesn't want to go buy clothes. And I don't want to get in trouble with the guys, but one of my favorite things to do is to go with her to try on clothes. I know I'm weird. I know, I know. Putting a little condemnation on some of you guys, but hey, buck up. <laughs> I, like, I like to shop for food and, you know, that, that, that doing that home thing and pictures and furniture, uh, that, I'm just not into all that. But So, so we're there, and, and uh, so I said, so I'm telling her, you know, try that. She, oh, I can't wear that. I can't wear that. You know, that's all this other stuff. And, and, and I tell her how good she looks in it. You know, and she's like, no. Oh. And, you know, you got those four mirror thingies, you know, where you can see yourself from every different angle. And she starts, and after she hears me now, she's like, no, oh, not too bad for a grandma, you know. And, you, know no. you, you, you know what I'm saying? And uh, man, she has some new things on today. And I, I twist her arm and said, you need to buy those. Those are, and and just just had fun. But there's something about, we have that power to help someone believe about themselves that they, they, they didn't before. And there's a tendency in all of us, because of the culture, how, how many of you, yeah, let's raise our hand just for the fun. How many of you either were raised or you, you grew up, maybe not even at home, maybe just the culture, that, the people that you ran with, that your first thing was to to see what was wrong or to be critical or what wasn't right and that kind of thing. Are you understand what I'm saying? I mean, a bunch of us in here. In the church, I, I had a relative who he, he would tell you everything that's wrong. I mean, if you brought up somebody, he would have a whole list of what was wrong with them. And he was a Christian. And, and the thing, I, I believe, I was, I was thinking about this this week, I believe in the church even if that's, your, that's the way you are, that, that's, that's not the way God is. But the Lord wants to turn that for good. If you have that much ability to discern, and, and hopefully it's even accurate, you're seeing the wrong things, though I don't think it takes much anointing to see what's wrong with people. Uh, I had a lady who said that was her gift. <laughs> and I said, I didn't say that. I, I wanted to say that. I just said, I, that ain't the Bible, and I don't, you know. Anyway, she got mad and I left. It was okay, but, uh, but, but I believe that the Lord, if if we can discern, He can turn that, and I believe that we should try and begin to turn that to see what's accurate, what's good, even the the, the treasures that are there. Okay, Proverbs twenty two, six. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. Now. People use that for all kinds of things, like train them up, discipline, and all that stuff. But one of the big parts is to train them up to see who they are in the Lord and to see their giftings and anointings and, and to make them feel strong and confident about that. It's, it's hard as a parent not to, yeah, I know, but you know, he needs to do a little bit better job on this. <laughs> you know, he, he may have done something incredibly good at school, but, you know, he does a he didn't make his bed. <laughs> you know, he's a slob in his room. You know, all that stuff. And that, that criticalness, and I understand making people do what they should do. I'm, I'm not saying that with kids. But the point is, when we spend, that that's all that they hear, and they're not hearing the other stuff. It sets them up to, they, they think that's what God is saying about them. That he's only looking at the things that they're messing up, the things that they're doing wrong. Um, there was a lady who said this. You know, one of the, one of the things that we, we get with prophetic words is oftentimes we hear things about ourselves that we would have never seen or believed, right? Anybody, anybody when you heard a word, it's like either you missed it 100 miles or must have been the next person in line or, 
you, you know, I know you're just trying to make me feel good or, you know, one of those kind of things. I remember when I had one in 87 and there was all these things about even being a pastor and all of that stuff. And uh, but but it opened up it opened up some things from the Lord that I began to pray into and ask him. But here's, I, w- I want you to hear this about, a, a lady said this, I, I love to hear other people's prophecies. So I treat them not as they are, but as God sees them. And I invite them into their destiny. Paul told Timothy, let's go over First Timothy 4 real quick. If you don't know, Timothy was, was mentored by Paul. And First Timothy is a really tough one to find in the Bible. It's after Thessalonians. And it's before Hebrew, oh, before Titus. I forget. First Timothy four, eight. That's not what I want. That's not it. And that's not it either. Help me, Jesus. <laughs> okay. He tells Pim- Timothy not to be, to look at himself, look down on himself because he's so young. And he tells him to, verse 12, First Timothy 4, 12, thank you. It's good. Okay, thank you. Let no one despise your youth, but be an example of the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity, till I come and give attention to reading, to exhortation. And do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of hands of the eldership. Meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them, that your progress may be evident to all. Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Continue in them, for doing this you will save both yourself and those who hear you. Here's, here's the point is like he's saying, you know, Timothy, you're young and, and some of the people think you're, you know, you're still wet behind the, the ears and, and who are you to be leading? And he said, don't listen to that stuff. Listen, you have a calling on your life and you remember we, we prayed for you, laid hands and there was a prophetic word given to you and listen, you need to do something with that. <laughs> you need to be going after it. Sometimes we get prophetic words and we just sit on it and wait for God to do everything and I can't find anywhere in Scripture that that's correct. A lot of times it's uh, kind of, especially with, with grace, it's like it's all on God and hardly any on me. The, the New Testament does talk about works, works that we're supposed to do for the kingdom, for the Lord. And we take that that He's given us and He shows us those things and He wants us to put our hand to it and do what we can. We can't make it happen, but he expects us to go after him. Amen? Are you with me? So when I got that word about being a pastor, I, I began studying and praying more and, and asking the Lord. And, and then the thought came to us about doing a Bible study. And so we started that. We began to put our hand to what we knew to do. Because a lot of people think, you know, Jesus did it all. When Jesus said it's finished, he wasn't talking about you. Amen? <laughs> Are you with me, you guys? All right. And so, so as God gives us things, He expects us to, go, to do something with it. When we, talk about, when we talk about discipleship, as we're around folks, we need to be that word of encouragement, that word, if we, if we know about prophetic words or God, we see some things in there, or just day-to-day stuff. They need to hear life from us, not... Hey, you did this wrong, you did this wrong, you did this wrong. There is a time for some of that, but they need to hear, I think you're wonderful. I think you're amazing. In, in, 
in authentic ways because it causes them to begin to believe more in God, believe more that God wants to use them, and, and, there's, and there's a courage to launch off into it. Amen? One of my favorite guys in the Bible, he's described once with his real name. In, in some of your translation, it says Joseph. I think it's in Acts 4, which translated means Joseph. It's, okay, Richard doesn't count, but anybody else know who I'm talking about? He has another name that they gave him. And he really is my, one of my heroes in the New Testament. And, and he, was, he was named Barnabas. They, they changed his name, which literally means son of encouragement. He was the guy that went around and encouraged everybody. I mean, I, I don't know if it's cause, because I want to be like that and I'm not, but he is one of my heroes, I, even more so than Paul for me, because I, I just watch this guy's life. And he's not trying to, to get anything for himself, but he's trying to launch people into their destiny. And so years later, he, uh, Saul comes to town. Y'all remember Saul who becomes Paul? He was the ISIS of his day. Really was. He, some theologians say he was responsible for over 10,000 Christians being killed. So he comes to Jerusalem, and guess what? The apostles didn't want to talk to him. They weren't quite convinced. I don't know. You, and, but there's this one guy, Barnabas, and he latches on to him. And he takes him into the, you know, to the, the inner circle to meet uh, Peter and John. And, and he's this man who sees things in, in Paul that Saul, that, I don't know that Saul saw him. That sounds funny. Saul, Saul. So, so, so then you go, you fast forward some years later, there's this huge, there is this huge revival going on uh, over in Antioch. And, and they send Barnabas over there to check it out and just kind of help. Barnabas doesn't go over there with this attitude, let me tell you how to do it. But, but you get this picture, he's looking around and seeing what, what's needed that's not, that this church doesn't have. And evidently, one thing he saw was they needed more teaching. And he remembered this guy, Saul, who was brilliant, who got saved, and he, they've heard some reports about him. But he goes and gets him. And I believe he just poured in to Saul made him believe that he was really called by God, that he could do these incredible things. And, and then the Holy Spirit points out, as these people are ministering to the Lord, he points out, okay, I want you to take Barnabas and Paul and, and send them out. And so because of this guy's encouragement, because of this guy speaking life into this fella, he ends up going out. And, and it's really interesting the way it words it. For about the next five chapters, it says Barnabas and Paul. Barnabas and Paul. But then after about, which, which they say covers about five years. But then when you read it and they're together, it says Paul and Barnabas. Paul and Barnabas. And, and you know, Barnabas was okay about, kind of like John the Baptist, that this guy can become more and I'm less. Because it's not about me. I want to see this guy do what he's called. I see greatness in him. I see that he's going to, he is the apostle that, that's going to turn that Roman Empire upside down. Years later, there's this guy named John Mark that um, is traveling with him. And Paul says, I don't want him to come. He's a whiner. <laughs> he's a wuss. I mean, he's this guy. I don't want him around. And, and, and Barnabas won't, because Barnabas sees in John Mark destiny. He sees the greatness. And he's one of those guys that's not looking at the wrong. He's looking at the right that's inside him. And so it becomes so heated that they split up. And Barnabas takes John Mark, 
and Paul takes Silas, and they, they separate their ways. What's, what's really cool is later on, in, in one of the, uh, Paul's writing, he, he talks about, bring John Mark, I need him. And what's really cool, he's the guy who wrote the book of Mark, and Paul wrote 12, 13, I'm not sure, all the epistles, something like that. So, so just think about it, because of, a lot because of one man, a huge portion of the Bible was written. And, and I heard Chris Vallison make this statement one time. He said, so many people are just one Barnabas away from greatness. We need people in our life who see that in us. Husbands, we need to speak how wonderful our wife is. We need to convince them that they are the best thing since peanut butter. I'm telling you. You need to hurt yourself. You need to embarrass yourself to tell them. Ladies, you, you need to tell your husbands how proud you are of them, how much you believe in them. That they, I'm telling you, we, a man's biggest need is his ego. We need to feel good about us. And a woman's greatest need is security. And so as we look at these new Christians, because, guys, the Lord's fixing to lead a lot of people to him and a lot of people back to him. And, and the question is, when they come in and, and God begins to put some people in your life to disciple, because he is, whether they come in and, and because you're part of this church you help uh, or because on the job the Lord brings people to you, God wants you to begin to see the greatness, the goodness. He wants, he wants to develop an eyesight that's so different than the way the world is. Because you see, when God looks at you, contrary to popular opinion in the church, He does not look at what's wrong with you. It's the truth. Now, we, we need the people in our life that we trust that can speak the truth to us in love because sometimes there are things but more than that we need to we need to believe that God really wants to use me that he really does love me I want you to turn to one person and say you're his favorite <laughs> now you're, you're enjoying that too much but I want you to turn to one other person and say, I'm his favorite, all right? You know, we, we need to, in a spiritual sense, say, oh, my gosh, that looks so amazing on you, you know? That you've got that gift, oh, that voice, what... You have such compassion. You, you have such a gift of hospitality. Not, what's your problem? <laughs> you need to be like me, you know? We, you know, because what, what ends up happening sometimes is we look at people and through, through our eyes of, of our own faults, and we'll, we'll critique people who do something better than we do. You know? See, some of us in this room are really good with finances, and some of us aren't as good. And I can be critical and say, yeah, but you, you had a better, and I've had to go through all this, and blah, blah, blah. Or we could say, hey, you, can you believe somebody's calling me? <laughs> Is this God? I better not. It's, it's not, but uh, it's not God. Sorry. If I'd said yes, yeah, you really would have thought, well, what's going on, man? Thank you. <laughs> Where was I? <laughs> what was I saying? It was really good. It was coming to this crescendo, and it was just going to be, yeah. Um, but some people have a gift, and, and so we need to not, not put them down, but say, hey, they've got that gift. Maybe I can learn something from them. Some of us... Some of us are great with kids, and some of our, you know, our kids are 
we got issues and problems, and we can say, well, mine are special, and they're, they, but, but, you know, we can learn from one another. Some of us, some of us are not very musical, and there may not be much hope there, but anyway, all right. <laughs> we, we may not want you to, anyway, sorry. You don't have to get up, David. I wasn't talking about you. <laughs> David's not allowed to sing. He can play bass, but he's not allowed to sing. I, I'll finish with this. Um, There's a, there's a John Maxwell book. He's a, he writes a lot of books on being leaders and leadership stuff. And he has a book called Developing the Leader Within You. Some of us have read that. So I, it's been years since I saw it. But, but he tells a true story in there. There was this huge school district, and, and they had like, I don't know, maybe 25th grade classes, 26th grade, just huge, massive and they decided to run an experiment, and they, they got all those teachers' names, and they, they put them on a piece of paper, and they threw them all in a bowl, and they picked out one, one teacher. Then they took all the students' names, and they wrote them on, and then they pulled out 20 for a class. And they told, they told the, the students that they were being put into this uh, advanced class because of their their abilities and their their intellect and all that and they told the teacher and they said and this teacher is is incredibly gifted about this and, and then they, they told the teacher okay these kids that you've got we we have chosen them because they are so advanced and you're going to get to teach them this year at the end of the year the kids in that class who were just the same as everybody else. It wasn't a scored 25% higher than everybody else did. And so they told the, the teacher said, Well, it's because it's, you know, because these students are no, 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 we picked them out. Well, it's because of my teaching, because I no, we just picked you out of a hat too. <laughs> and and there's something about that we have built in us that we rise to what's expected or what's believed about us. We can speak words. I, I remember, I don't know what my mom does. I was in second grade. I, can, I remember I had a white shirt, black pants. I think we might have even been, it was a Christmas program or something. And I had a reading part in it. And, uh, and I did really good at it. I memorized it and, and read it. And my dad said, man, you, you're, you're really, you ought to be an attorney. <laughs> and so for years... Out of that one word, that became what I wanted to be. Such a small thing, such an insignificant. But we have that we can speak those things in, and hopefully through the through the Lord's eyes, and we can call people up to greatness, to greater. And and we as as a body, let's work at. You know, when we hear somebody that wants to point out a flaw, either let's pray about that. Or, or help them see something that they're not seeing. You know? Because we all got them. And most of us know them better than anybody else. But you believing in me gives me a lot better shot at overcoming than you reminding me of my faults. And sometimes we have blind spots and people need to speak into it. You know, I love Danny Silks. You know, sometimes something like bad breaths right under your nose and you don't even know it. You're the last one to know and you need somebody to say, hey, get a breath, man. Anyway. Uh, are you getting a breath, man? All right. <laughs> I think that's... I encourage you. To begin to change the way you look. Go into situations expecting good and to look for what, what's there that is amazing. There's so many people that are full of doubt, and yet they have the goods to accomplish incredible stuff. And they need a, they need a word of encouragement. If you've gotten a prophetic word, and you're, and you're kind of just sitting back on that, you need to lean into that. Paul said, I mean, go after it. Put everything you got into it. 
don't just wait for God to do everything because he's, he's not going to turn, as Richard said, he's not going to turn a ship that's sitting in, in the water, but one that's traveling, he'll use. Amen? And we got some, we're going to have some baby Christians coming in, and they're going to be having all kinds of stuff hanging on them. <laughs> There's going to be plenty of diapers to change going around. They're going to have messes out the wazoo. But how many, how many of you grandparents and parents, when you see a little baby, say, I can't believe you pooped yourself. I can't believe, you know. No, we laugh at them and tell them how wonderful they are, and they got a stinky diaper, and, you know, no, 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 oh. That's what we want to do. Would you stand on your feet? Um, if you have, if you have needs this morning, we'll have ministry team that will, would love to pray with you. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord, I'm just telling you, it's the best thing you'll ever do. It will change your life forever. And uh, if you're today, if you're hungry for more, I think that's that's one of the best best heart cries that God answers. And I would ask you this week that Kendall Werns, a young lady in her, in her late 20s that, that died unexpectedly, um, they asked me to do the funeral. And so if you would pray for me, I would really appreciate that. I, I'm just believing for the Lord to do some, some good stuff there. So let's grab the hand of the person next to us and let's pray. So Lord, we're just asking that you would open up our eyes. Father, first of all, to see how much you love us. Lord, you'd open up our heart to receive your love. Lord, we, you, you said we're supposed to love people the way we love ourselves, and some of us have such a difficult time doing that. But Lord, when we look at you, and we're reminded of what Jesus did for us out of love, God, Lord, Lord, change, change our thinking, change the way we see things. And Lord, we're asking today for our brothers and sisters. God, that they would know how exceptional they are and how amazing they are, that you have things for them to do. And Lord, that you want to use them. And, and Lord, to be an encourager, Lord, we pray that you'd raise up an army of Barnabases. Lord, it seems like it's needful to, to be able to have a, an army of Pauls. We need an army of Barnabases. Lord, who believe in us, who see the good and remind us of, of our calling. Lord, we just thank you for that. We thank you for your love today. We ask, God, that you would use us as we go from this place. Lord, that we would speak to the people that we run into. Lord, that we just try to love on them. And if you open a door to speak life to them, God, that we'll, we'll do that. We won't pull back. Whether it be at the gas station or at work or, Lord, at, to our waitress or whoever it might be. And Lord, we just give you praise for that in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Enjoy this beautiful weather. These guys are going to do worship for a little bit. If you just want to soak, that's great, too. If not, hug some people before you go.